well, 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 welcome to the Runners Connect Run to the Top Extra Kick Extra Kick Podcast. Hi everyone, this is Coach Sinead back with you again for this latest episode of Extra Kick brought to you by Runners Connect. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you're off to a good one and that you enjoy today's podcast. Before I jump into today's question, if you have a question you would like one of our expert coaches to answer in an upcoming podcast, you can submit it at runnersconnect.net forward slash daily. We would love to hear any of your training or nutrition questions, so if you've got any, please do send them our way. Today we have a really great question from Andrea, and Andrea says, I've been training specifically for the half marathon for a while now, and I've done six half marathons at this point. However, I want to try something different, and I'm going to move down to the 5k for a while. I imagine my training will see a big transition, but I'm not exactly sure of what 5k training entails. What are some key workouts to the 5k? Andrea, this is a fantastic question, and like you said, 5K is a little bit different uh, to the marathon. So in the 5K, you are really trying to hit about 90 to 95% of your VO2 max, whereas in the marathon, the average runner hits about 60 to 65% of their VO2 max. And if you're not familiar with VO2 max, this is the maximum rate of oxygen consumption measured during exercise. So it makes complete sense that the percent of your VO2 max you are capable of using decreases with increase of distance. The 5K, you are hitting about 90 to 95% of your VO2 max, and that's why you do need to do VO2 max specific workouts. And so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is speed endurance. Speed endurance is so important to the 5K for the very reason that you are trying to hit about 90 to 95% of your VO2 max. And speed endurance is essentially your ability to hold a specific pace for an increasingly longer period of time. So this is obviously key to a fast 5K and even a 10K. And I will say speed endurance is not the same thing as pure speed. For example, just to demonstrate how this would work in a 5K, the average pace you need to run your 5K goal pace is a lot different than the pace you would be able to run in a flat out mile. Obviously in a mile, you're going to be able to run significantly faster, but the problem isn't really that you don't have enough pure speed for the 5K, it's more that you lack the endurance to run three miles at the pace you are trying to run without stopping. So in preparation for the 5K, you're not ever really going to be doing any sort of sprint workouts where you are just kind of running flat out. Instead, you will be wanting to just practice running as close to your VO2 max as possible because the more you practice that, the better able you are to run close to your VO2 max in the 5K itself. So speed endurance is a big part of an effective 5K training plan. The other side of your training plan should be devoted to your aerobic capabilities. So while getting faster and improving your VO2 max is obviously a large component to improving speed endurance, what might actually be more important to 5K success is your aerobic strength. So even though the 5K is a good bit shorter than the marathon, Distances like the 5K and the 10K are still very aerobically dominated events, and so you really can't ignore the aerobic system in your training as well. Now I'll talk about the four key training sessions you want to implement in a 5K training plan. So some of these are actually going to overlap with a half marathon or marathon training plan. And again, that's just because these distances, while shorter, they still do require a lot of aerobic capacity. On that note, you're still going to want to do a weekly long run. These will obviously be a good bit of your weekly mileage, and they also just work to boost your maximum aerobic capacity. This also actually improves your VO2 max, and it really just works to increase your fat metabolism, strengthen your leg muscles, and also increase your endurance, which again, is your ability to run for long periods of time without stopping. So you still need to keep a weekly long run in place. 
Obviously, it's going to be a good bit shorter than your marathon and half marathon specific long runs. For the average runner, you can typically do about 70 to 75 percent, maybe even 80 percent of what you would do in terms of mileage for a marathon long run. So say you typically do maybe an 18 miler for your marathon long run. Here you would want to do maybe more like 12 to 13 miles for your long run in preparation for a 5k. And that might sound like a lot. This does depend on where you are in terms of fitness and experience. This is more for advanced runners, whereas intermediate runners, you would maybe want to err more on the side of eight to nine miles, depending on your current fitness. So long runs are one big component of a successful 5K training plan. I'll move on to our next workout, which is hill runs. And hill workouts are really designed to build muscular and cardiovascular strength. They're kind of actually a sneaky way of increasing your speed and your turnover. And so you want to choose hills that have about a 4 to 10% grade, nothing too steep. And you want a hill that's anywhere from 200 to even 400 meters long. It really does depend on how many intervals you want to do. If it's a 200 meter hill, you can do more intervals. If it's 400, it's going to be a shorter workout, but obviously you are going to be spending more time on the hill. But the way hills work, they're designed to really develop the elastic muscle fibers, which are the most significant source of power. And so nearly 90% of all distance runners are deficient in muscular strength. And this is so important to the 5K. You really need to work on your explosiveness and just your general strength. So hills are a great way at both building your strength, and also building your speed endurance. And this is partly because hill running does require both steady state and oxygen depleting efforts. It really does provide a good transition from aerobic to your anaerobic capacity. So it is a really good workout to help you sustain a higher tolerance for the buildup of lactate acid in your muscles and really just help you to, again, work on your speed endurance. So that's your hill workout. That's a really big one. It's kind of a bread and butter workout for the 5K. The next one I want to talk about is really getting back to your aerobic system. So we're going to talk about tempo runs. These are the third key workout for developing strength and, again, just your stamina, your overall aerobic capacity. So an example of a tempo run would be, first off, maybe a 10 to 15 minute warm up. And then a 20 to 25 minute tempo run, which if you're not familiar with tempo pace, this would be about 10 to 15 seconds per mile slower than your 10K pace. The physiological science behind tempo runs is that they really help to raise your lactate threshold. And this really just ties back into your speed endurance. As your lactate threshold velocity increases, you will run at faster speeds without getting tired which I don't think any runner would say no to. So these runs, they're really a good way to practice your ability to run hard for a longer period of time. And you're really going to do these about once a week for the three months leading up to your competitive season. So far, I've talked about long runs. I've talked about hill workouts and tempo runs. Now I'm going to talk about track workouts. Track workouts are very specific, obviously, to the 5K and 10K. You don't typically do these when you're training for the half and the full marathon, but these really do work to improve your leg turnover and kind of help you develop some muscle memory for the pace you're going to want to hit on race day. Early in the season, you're going to want to do longer repeats, maybe say 1,000 meters and even up to mile repeats. But as it gets closer to your peak race, you want to start doing shorter intervals like 800s and 400s. So one example of a solid 5K workout early on in the season would be maybe 5 to 6 by 1,000 meters on the track. And then towards the end of your season, you're going to want to do more like 5 to 6 by 800 meter repeats or 10 to 12 by 400 meter repeats. And towards the end of the season, you will increase the recovery interval between your hard intervals. 
but your hard intervals, while they are shorter, they will be a little bit faster. And again, this is just to help you practice the speed you are going to try and run on race day, but also give you some rest intervals so you're able to get through the workout and do a little bit more distance than you actually would do on race day. Again, just to practice that pace, build some muscle memory, and build your speed endurance. Andrea, those are the four key workouts to a successful 5K training plan. I know there are probably some similarities to the training you've already done for your half marathons, but the 5K and 10K, while again, are shorter than the half marathon, they do recruit a lot of the same aerobic system that you would recruit for for a half marathon and marathon training. Hope that helps you out. Hope that all makes sense. And I wish you the best of luck with your upcoming season as you prepare for a new event. It's really exciting to spice it up sometimes, so wish you the best of luck with the 5K. Again, if you have a question you would like one of our coaches to answer in an upcoming episode, you can submit it at runnersconnect.net forward slash daily. We would love to hear any questions you have on training, racing, nutrition, whatever the case may be, so please do submit those and we would love to help you out. Thank you so much again for joining me today and I hope you do so again next time. Until then, have a fantastic day.